Hey everyone, I am here with amazing people from up and down the country who are involved in church planting and we're going to have a conversation and we hope it will be an encouragement to you, a challenge to you and even an inspiration to you to get involved into church planting. Without further ado, I'm going to jump straight in and bring Ben into this conversation. Ben, tell us a bit more about your story, man. So um, we never expected to be church planters, but 14 years ago, we took on the leadership of the church that I grew up in, a small town in North Yorkshire. And really early on in that journey, we sensed that God was speaking to us about something that we didn't know would look like it looks now. Okay. And that ended up being a church planting journey. So um, in the last 10 years, we've planted uh, four locations of our church. So it's now a multi-site church, one church, five locations. Great in small market towns right across the north of England. So we love what God is doing. It's been a great journey. Um, of course, highs and lows along the way, yeah. um, but we're thankful for the opportunity to mm. feel like we're playing a part in seeing the kingdom of God advance uh, in our towns and right across the nation. Mm. Um, very passionate about the north of England, but of course there is other good things happening in the kingdom of God in other places in the country, yeah. not just the north. Um, so these guys we've met earlier this year and doing some incredible stuff about as far south as you could get, right there. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So God called us to move out of a community town just outside of London to move to the Isle of Wight to plant a church as a family. So me and my wife, Emma, and our three kids moved down there to plant a church in a coastal town and just working through what does that look like to be part of a thriving community that's yeah. on a coast so different from where we came from. And we just had that exciting journey to see what it looks like to plant a church there. So that's been amazing for us. And at the same time we're doing that, I know Mims, you were doing something amazing over in Wales. Yeah, so been part of the church in Manchester for 10 years. And then um, an opportunity came to us for our senior pastor, my husband and I and our two children. Would we go to Cardiff in Wales to, <laughs> to plant a campus of, uh, of, of our church? And then... Um, we were, we're not Welsh, we'd never been to Cardiff before, but having gone down there to visit, um, Johnny and I just really felt God just put his heart for, yes, Cardiff, but so Wales good. as well. Um, to, the, to the point where you just, we just had to say yes, <laughs> without much <laughs> plan after that, but yeah. we just knew it was the right thing yeah. to do. But yeah. um been amazing to meet Mark, yeah. who's doing amazing things in Wales as well, yeah. in the other, Great the other city. city of Swansea. Yes. <laughs> well. I can't believe we're in Swansea because my, my church planting journey started in <coughs> 1992. Oh. It's a long time ago when I left Mattersea and went to went up to Edinburgh to plant a church. And uh, that was incredible. And then uh, later on, many years later, I went to Philippines. And when wow. we went there, didn't pl expect to plant a church, but uh, God put a challenge not to tell people what to do, but to show people wow. oh, what good. to do. So we started a church over there. And then a couple of years later, you know, God gives a word that he wants to give us a vineyard. And so we started planting churches and ended up planting 19 churches from wow. that one oh, church. Oh, then great. God called us it's back great. to Swansea, where we helped develop uh, the Bible College of Wales. And part of that was starting a church, Liberty Church. Mm -hmm. And so here we are a few years later. Now the church plant is planting a church. Okay. And so we want to be an example to other people that anybody can do it. Yeah, That's amazing. That is great. And you're absolutely right. Anybody can do it. But we all know that there are different aspects to this journey yeah. that get yeah, involved absolutely. along the way. And it would be amazing to hear from you, Emma, uh, what your journey has been like with Altitude. Well, what's been amazing with Altitude is just seeing the Holy Spirit breaking through our mindsets, yeah. which I know loads of, you know, around this table, we've been talking about those unhelpful mindsets that the Holy Spirit has just been breaking yeah, through right. in yeah, order yeah, to on. break ground. Yeah. And for us, a major one was the thought of, wow, we don't have a team. Yeah. We're not actually taking a team from where we were to where we are now. Yep. But what's been amazing has been seeing what we thought was an obstacle yeah, yeah, become yeah. a real releasing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah. allowed us to get to know our community, to actually get in our fingernails into yeah, the ground. Um, God gave us a word about how Altitude needs to be a church where everyone has a seat at the table. Mm -hmm. And so what we found, we were able to um, tell non-Christians about Jesus yeah. and to draw in other Christians from the community. Mm -hmm. And God has actually pulled those two groups together yeah. to plant Altitude. And so we, what we thought would be a limitation has actually become a real stamp on Altitude mm -hmm. about this is who Good. we are. You know, which has been a really thrilling part of this yeah. journey. 
And I think one of the things in reflection is, is we followed the call of God to go and plant a church. Yeah. And some of those mindsets of we need to take a team with us was such an obstacle. But when we've reflected with our now team who are helping us lead, they said, from an island perspective, if you'd brought a team, it would have been your biggest obstacle for us to come to your church. Yeah. And so these obstacles that we thought were in the way, when we trusted the calling over what the obstacles were, in reflection, it's amazing. You go, actually, if we did it any other way, yeah. we wouldn't have seen the breakthrough we have of our team. And I think that's just been a beautiful thing to see yeah. that when we push into the calling rather the obstacles, we can see amazing things happen. Right. Yeah, well, it's all about mindset. For me, it's all about mindset. Yeah. And uh, there's a mindset that we can't plant. We don't have enough money, don't have enough people, don't have this, don't have that. Where do you find that in the New Testament? Yeah. Well, come on. You, know, we, we, yeah. you can't find it. I yeah. mean, if yeah. the disciples, once they were whipped and lashed, said, that's it, finished, and we know we we're here today. Yeah. Yeah. But they said, no, give us more boldness. Mm. And we need to understand that when we plant churches, it's like an adventure. Yeah. It's right. an adventure. Oh, so good, yeah. I don't want yeah. a boring yeah. church. I, it's an adventure, and there's obstacles, and there's things you overcome. But the sense of God, God always provides. He yeah. always comes mm. in, steps in, he provides. We went to Swansea, didn't know a soul in Swansea. Yeah, God provided some brilliant yeah. people around us. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's just like saying, okay, God, what do you want us to do? Yeah. Mm. And uh, now we're going to plant another church. We don't know what's ahead of us, but we're ready for yeah. Yeah. what God wants. And it's, it's like, yes, we can do it. That's it. You know, that's I think it. it's yeah. that openness mm. and then obedience. Yeah. Yeah. And what I've yeah. discovered is that once you plant the first church, Something right. supernatural. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Wow. That people never know until they plant a church. And what I've discovered is that when you plant the first church, something miraculous, supernatural, God is so pleased. It's good. Yeah, it's I don't good. know you feel like that in uh, Cardiff. Yeah, I think, I mean, um, one of the biggest obstacles that we had to kind of face and overcome was the obstacle of comfort, yeah. which, mm -hmm. which sounds kind of strange, yeah, but we've true. been part of a, a big church for a, a decade. Yeah. Um, and you know we've broken ground with 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 pioneered things yeah, within that yeah, yeah. yet this opportunity came to us and um obviously thankful for senior pastors who believe in us before we believe in yeah, ourselves yeah, yeah, yeah. who say you yeah. know we believe that you can go and do this and we're yeah. like mm. i'm sorry if you got are you sure you got the right people <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but that comfort of going you know from that big church, the team, also family, you know, yeah. children, young children that have got into a, a great school. We've just bought a house yeah. in yeah. an area that we'd wanted to yeah. for a long time. Mm -hmm. And yet then that was when God Boom. God came with this opportunity. Wow. Yeah. And I think for us, wow. it was it was the letting go of comfort to go, do you know what? This is what we said we would do, as in yeah. lay our life down before mm -hmm. before yeah. God. Um, this is what's come to us. Let's yeah. do it. Um, I think when you've got calling, it makes yeah. it so much easier to let go of comfort. Yeah. Because calling is, yeah, it's key to all of it. Because yeah. if you just do it because it's a good idea, yeah. mm -hmm. at some point it'll be hard enough that it's not a good idea. Mm -hmm. But if you were called in the first place, then it doesn't matter if it's if it's mm -hmm. harder. It's yeah. like, well, no, God said. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that throws into the... You know, the sense of we're all called in some mm. sense yeah, because yeah, yeah. of the Great Commission and everything else. So yes. why would we not yeah. go out? Why would we just keep it to ourselves in one place and build one mm. holy huddle when yeah. when there's a, a whole nation to reach? Yeah. And it's good. Not one person can do it on their own. But that's what when Pastor Glynn said shared the vision about church planting, I was excited again, not just as a church planter, mm. but excited to see what difference we can we can see for the mm. kingdom of God mm. in the nation that mm. there are if we're Mo um, empowering multiple churches to make a difference yeah. then who knows where that finishes yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. not just with the app <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think you're absolutely right it is you're true it's true that there's a calling for, for for all of us to get involved in this and i know there'll be many people watching right now um who are looking for some sense of inspiration sure. to to encourage them or to just get them over the line to get involved in church planting mm -hmm. um how would you uh say a few words to them yeah. to to inspire them into getting involved in church planting Great question. i think one of the things for me is it's the drive for us was never to set up a church service and the drive to sell your home uproot your kids move house move away from your comfort zones the driver was never, let's create a church service. It was always about people. Yeah. And for us, yeah. I had to get to the point where I was so comfortable saying, even if it's just for one person, God, right. that is all worth it. If their soul ends up in eternity with you yeah. and they have a living relationship right yeah. here on earth. Mm -hmm. And that driver changed everything for us. It made it from being 
oh, we want to go set up a church mm. to actually churches the people. And now we're seeing that on the other side. When you see your first salvation, you see someone who yeah. didn't know Jesus, yeah. who didn't know the relationship and the healing and the comfort they could have. Yeah. They get saved and you have the privilege of baptizing them. Mm. And then they go back into that community yeah. and that transformation moves from a person to a community. Yeah. And for us, that drive of being, it's not about a Sunday morning experience. Yeah. Yeah. It's about bringing God's presence to a new place and saying, God, here we are, use yeah. us. Yeah. And the people he puts around you has just been amazing to see. And I think for us, that made all of the things that we had to get through or work through or push through. Yeah. When you think about people and you see their faces and it doesn't matter then if you've got one person on your Sunday morning yeah. or a thousand, yeah, yeah, each of those right. faces is so key to yeah. our journey. And yeah. I'd add to that, I think, as pastors, sometimes we can get so caught up in, we need to make sure we maintain this yeah, in, yeah. in these four walls here, yeah. that we're maintaining this. Um, and something that I think we, we really need to be excited about pushing through is, is we're in a topsy-turvy kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, God's yeah. kingdom turns the world upside yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if we have the mentality that, oh, you know, if we release some of our key leaders, we're going to be um, subtracting. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. going to be shrinking. Well, no, mm -hmm. when we release our key leaders to go plant, that it, God's in the business of addition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we're not yeah. dividing our churches when yeah. we're planting. We're yeah. multiplying them. Yeah. And that's what I would share with anybody. Yeah. You know, God is in the business of this topsy turvy way of doing that's things. True. If we're so afraid of failing, yeah. then, you know, God's going to use that failure yeah. and completely use it for His glory. Yeah. You know? yeah. That even in multi site church, because of course there was a part where you're releasing people to go and plant the church yeah. and or send them a team or whatever. And therefore, there's a there's a subtraction from the main church to go and do this. Yeah. But actually, in terms of we really talk about that one church, five locations, yeah, yeah, and it's not just about the five; it's about the one. Yeah, yeah. And so, yes, of course, we've sent people out, and that's taken time and finance and whatever else. Sure. But our church is so much richer now because mm. there are people from all locations yeah, that will yeah. move around, and yeah. we kind of cross populate a lot um, because that brings strength to the whole church. That you can you can bring people from here, not just because oh you need a musician from here. But actually, because it's an investment into the wider body, yeah, so that, that main right. church has thrived and flourished because it's now part of a much richer family. Yeah. Plus, we're hoping to take ground. We are taking ground yeah. for the yeah. kingdom of God in different towns yeah. across yeah. the nation. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's good. That's yeah. great. Yeah. And I think the whole thing is risk. Hmm. And I think that why that's why a lot of pastors won't they won't plant yeah. churches yeah. because they see it as a risk. Mm -hmm. Oh, 20 people from a hundred. That's you know, you know the risk is too great, uh, but in the in the New Testament the the churches weren't planted by pastors, yeah. they were planted by apostles, and I think part of the whole thing about church planting is we need to realize the apostolic and the apostles again and the prophets and the evangelists, mm -hmm. they're the ones that um, started the churches and mm -hmm. and I think part of our job as as, as pastors is if, if we're not equipped to, to plant churches to get people who are yeah, and yeah. they're sitting in our congregation yeah, yeah. and you know and it's not a risk it's not a risk when God's involved it's never a risk. I told our church two weeks ago we're going to start a new church and it's whole thing about comfortable we're, we're comfortable right now yeah, yeah, yeah. we've come through COVID and yeah. we're this nice <laughs> but let me tell you the family is going to be a little bit different yeah we're going to have a baby yeah, and uh, it's, it was just great for them to understand yeah, yeah, yeah. that we're going to come together but people don't do it because it's a risk it's not a risk mm -hmm. it's one of the most amazing things you'll ever do That's as a great, leader right? it's to release people into their gifting yeah, and to release the church into what it's really meant to do mm -hmm. to win souls and to make disciples yeah, great. How about anybody else experience that in their own lives i think the baby thing is really key for mm -hmm. us yeah. because you know um we've all got kids around the table and mm -hmm. As much as you can plan and prepare, you're never ready to have a child. Yeah, you might so have decorated like, the room, yeah. you might have bought the pram, you might have got the clothes, yeah. and oh. you've learned how to change a nappy, yeah. you practice on somebody else's kid, how yeah. to change a nappy. But until you have a child, yeah. it's only then that you kind of get qualified along yeah. the way. You're not at day one, you're not qualified to be a parent. Mm. And in church planting, you can do you should do all the due diligence. You should yeah. plan, prepare, you should budget, you should have policies, blah blah blah. Yeah. But you're never going to feel ready. Right. And there's yeah. too many people who have said, oh, I'm not ready to do it yet. Mm. But the miracle doesn't come without the movement. Yeah. When yeah, you take yeah, a step yeah. of faith, yeah, yeah. then that's when you see God move. And that's why for us, it's openness and obedience. Yeah, we yeah. never set out with a vision to plant a multi-site church, but we just stay mm. open to leading the Holy Spirit. Mm. And when we felt God speaking to us, then we said, well, are we going to be obedient or 
or not. Yeah. It wasn't whether we're ready, it was are we obedient. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that, I think, is the key for many yeah. people. And that will see the transformation of our nation because yeah. when people say yes to God, I might not be ready, but I'm willing to, yes. to stand in the yes. gap. That's, yeah. that's massive. Yeah, that's that's great. amazing. That's, that's really helpful. So there's so much to talk about here and so many people watching and listening right now. Uh, maybe some leaders just need a little nudge over the line to get yeah. them involved into church planting. And, and it would be amazing to just get some, something that you feel would be inspirational to them. So I'm going to come to you, Miriam. Yeah, I think, um, you know, we're never going to be experts yeah. before so we... True. It's like you're learning on the job. Yeah, you just got to you just got to go and do it. Yeah. Um, that that's challenging. Yeah. That's, you know, there's hard moments yeah. in that. But you've all you guys have all said it. It's so worth it. Yeah. And um, some of the best piece of advice we had, because it, I guess when you start, you've got your launch Sunday, you have all these expectations yeah. of yeah. who, how many thousands yeah. are going to walk yeah. through yeah. the doors. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not like a relatable journey. Yeah. It's, it's about the one and yeah, it's about the family or yeah. the student or the child that didn't like going to church. And then now they're bringing their parents because they yeah. love it so much. Yeah. And then, um, you know, there was this one one Sunday where we, there was 11 people in the room. Yeah. And uh, from our context, we've, we've come from, from a, our kind of mothership is, yeah. you know, a thousand yeah. uh, uh, over a weekend. Um, and we, we just have to have that mentality that yeah. we're going to live with a conviction and yeah. a passion that no matter who's in the room, we've yeah. got to be more um, more focused on God being in the yeah. room. Yeah. Because yeah. if the presence of God is in the room, yeah. Yeah. the people will come, yeah. breakthrough will happen. Yeah. And then, um, you know, that Sunday was one of our breakthrough Sundays yeah. because yeah. Holy Spirit was there. There was a moment of breakthrough. The responsiveness in the room to God yeah. was absolutely incredible. And I think the whole thing of, that we have learned as someone shared with us this very wise um, piece of wisdom yeah. was that you can't watch the waves, you have to watch the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so if every Sunday it's like the wave of who's there, who's not, or yeah, great, what's great. happened, this didn't work then you come away with disappointment where you yeah, should be right. encouraged yeah, about yeah. so many other things. Yeah. Um, but if you focus on the tide, like what's yeah. happened over three months, what's happened yeah. over six months. Yeah. And I think yeah. for us, the tide has been the growth in the people that, is, that have come, yeah. not necessarily the numeric growth, the growth in the individuals that have come maybe yeah. from, you know, no church experience, yeah. a bad church experience. They've come saying, don't expect anything from yeah. me. I've got nothing to give. Yeah. And it's those yeah. people that are leading teams, yeah. that are coming up with ideas, yeah. they're owning vision. Yeah. And um, that is what has brought us such yeah. encouragement.